Good morning. Will you join me in prayer as we begin our service today? Precious God, it's always a joy when your people gather in your presence. Whether we be in person or online, God, our thoughts, our hearts, the intents of our mind are now focused on you. Relish in our attention. Enjoy our praise. Hear our prayers. We ask in Christ's name. Amen. The Bible says in Psalm 71, verses 17 and 18, Since my youth, God, you have taught me, and to this day I declare your marvelous deeds. Even when I'm old and gray, do not forsake me, my God, till I declare your power to the next generation, your mighty acts to all who are to come. These two verses were posed to Edie Gilmore along with the question, what are the life experiences that have taught you a profound truth you would like to pass along to younger people at church? I want you to now hear her reply. I guess uh, my Christian life began when I was very young. I uh, was my grandparents were very good at reading the Bible and saying prayers before they ate their meals. And I just grew up with a lot of that around me. So um, when the missionaries came to school, uh, it was something I really loved. I, I just loved them. And they taught us a lot of lessons. Um, and um, especially the songs that we sang. I still remember some of the songs that I learned from them and some of the stories and um, it was just it was just something good at that time and you know until one of the churches decided they didn't want their children hearing this and so they weren't allowed to come to the school anymore and I really missed them but uh, that was the beginning of, of my learning a lot uh, <clears throat> and I loved the stories that they told um, but my, like I said, my grandparents were good about uh, uh, prayer, and my parents at that time weren't. We, we, we didn't have that in our family at that time. But um, I would go to a church, even though it wasn't one that they wanted me to go to, because I wanted to learn. <laughs> and <clears throat> there weren't any churches close around me. I mean, we had to go, several, you know, several miles at that time, and um, we just didn't go to church. So I really missed that growing up. It's been an interesting 80 plus years. <laughs> um, God has been uh, with me um, all my life, in the good times and some of the difficult times. Um, when it was difficult, I always knew He was there. <clears throat> And I always, I always knew that if I, uh, I wanted to feel his presence, I could pray. And I prayed a lot, and uh, he has been with me all these, all the years of my life, really. Uh, sometimes we're not a, really aware that we are praying because it has become such a natural thing for us. Um, the profound truth <laughs> is God loves us. Jesus gave his life in exchange for us. We are his. We are to reach out to those who do not really know him with love and caring. Share our faith in day-to-day -day living. God is love. We should be too. Pray that we can make a difference in our world today, um, even to those who are in need of Christ in their life.
Good morning. I brought a picture that I want to show you today. I'm going to turn it around here so you all can see it. This is a picture of Pastor Rich's mother. Her name was Sarah McClure. She was called Sally. And I want you to notice something. Notice her beautiful hair, her beautiful gray, white hair. This actually would be Brian's grandmother and Declan Asher's and Eli's great grandmother. Okay? When we see someone who has gray hair, what do we think? You may think, oh, they're old. Um, sometimes, as, as we may make, even make fun of them because they may not be able to hear as well, so we have to talk really loud so they can hear what we're saying. Or they may become a little forgetful about some things as they get older. And sometimes we'll even make jokes about that. Um, or they may not walk as straight, or they may need to use a, a cane or a walker or some other kind of device just to study them as they've gotten older. Do you know what the Bible says about gray-haired people and how we should treat them? First of all, in the book of Proverbs, chapter 16, verse 31, it says, Gray hair is a crown of splendor. What does that mean, a crown? You all know what crowns are, don't you? Kings and, and queens and princesses and prince wears crowns. So the Bible says that gray hair is a crown of splendor, magnificence, beauty, glory. Um, the Bible says that, that we are supposed to treat them as such. So how do you treat, or how would you treat a king or queen if they entered in the room? There's another place in the Bible. It's in Leviticus 19.32. And you know what it says? It says, rise in the presence of the aged. Show respect for the elderly. So you're supposed to stand up when they walk in and show respect. Is that something that you do? I would challenge you to think about that. When you see a person such as the picture that I showed you here. When you see a per person who has some gray hair, I want you to stand, you may not stand in respect, you may not actually stand, but I want you to have that attitude. Show them respect, thank them and listen to them for their years of wisdom and what they've learned. We can learn a lot from them. Remember, gray hair is a crown of glory.
Do you know any senior adults? Maybe you are a senior adult. By some definitions, I am a senior adult because I'm over 60 years of age. I used to think that 30 was old. When I was married and we began having children, I thought 50 was old. When I began scheduling doctor's visits and taking medication daily, I realized that I was growing older. I remember a couple of years ago feeling a little miffed when given a senior discount. Now I ask for it. I'm tempted to join each time I receive an AARP flyer in the mail. I now take inventory when I pass a restroom. I didn't used to do that. You see, I'm on the cusp. It's not so much an age thing as it is, well, I guess it's an age thing. If you are my age, you remember the comedian George Carlin. Carlin left us with some good insights into aging. He said, do you realize that the only time in our lives when we like to get old is when we are kids? If you're less than 10 years old, you're so excited about aging that you think in fractions. How old are you? I'm four and a half. You're four and a half going on five. You get into your teens and you simply jump to the next number. How old are you? I'm gonna be 16. You could be 12, but you're gonna be 16 eventually. Then the great day arrives and you become 21. Even the words sound a little like a ceremony. You become 21. Then you turn 30. <laughs> what happened there? Makes you sound like bad milk. He turned. We had to throw him out. What's wrong? What changed? You become 21. You turn 30. You're pushing 40. You reach 50. Then you make it to 60. By then you've built up so much speed you hit 70. After that it's day by day. You hit Wednesday. <laughs> you get into your 80s and you hit lunch. You hit 430. And it doesn't end there. Into the 90s you start going backwards. Well, it was just 92. Then a strange thing happens. If you make it over 100, you become a little kid again. I'm 101 and a half. I'll ask again. Do you know any senior adults? Psalm 50, or excuse me, Psalm 71 is a psalm for senior adults. Please join me there as I read. In verses 1 through 6, we find the trials of a godly senior adult. In you, Lord, I have taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your righteousness, rescue me and deliver me. Turn your ear to me and save me. Be my rock of refuge to which I can always go. Give the command to save me, for you are my rock and my fortress. Deliver me, my God, from the hand of the wicked, from the grasp of those who are evil and cruel. For you have been my hope, sovereign Lord, my confidence since my youth. From birth, I have relied on you. You brought me forth from my mother's womb. I will ever praise you. In verses 7 through 13, we discover the troubles of a godly senior adult. I have become a sign to many. You are my strong refuge. My mouth is filled with your praise, declaring your splendor all day long. Do not cast me away when I am old. Do not forsake me when my strength is gone. For my enemies speak against me. Those who wait to kill me conspire together. They say, God has forsaken him. Pursue him and seize him, for no one will rescue him. Do not be far from me, my God. Come quickly, God, to help me. May my accusers perish in shame. May those who want to harm me be covered with scorn and disgrace. Then in verses 14 through 16, the psalmist reveals the trust of a godly senior adult. As for me... 
I will always have hope. I will praise you more and more. My mouth will tell of your righteous deeds, of your saving acts all day long. Though I know not how to relate them all, I will come and proclaim your mighty acts, Sovereign Lord. I will proclaim your righteousness, or your, excuse me, your righteous deeds, yours alone. Finally, in verses 7 through 24, he shares the testimony of a godly senior adult. Since my youth, God, you have taught me, and to this day I declare your marvelous deeds. Even when I'm old and gray, do not forsake me, my God, till I declare your power to the next generation, your mighty acts to all who are to come. Your righteousness, God, reaches to the heavens. You who have done great things, who is like you, God? Though you have made me see troubles, many and bitter, you will restore my life again. From the depths of the earth, you will again bring me up. You will increase my honor and comfort me once more. I will praise you with the harp for your faithfulness, my God. I will sing praise to you with the lyre, Holy One of Israel. My lips will shout for joy when I sing praise to you, I whom you have delivered. My tongue will tell of your righteous acts all day long. For those who wanted to harm me have been put to shame and confusion. There are just a few phrases out of these 24 verses upon which I wish to base my message today. The first is found in verse 17. You have taught me. What had God taught David? Well, God taught David when he was young the relationship between God and his people. He taught that lesson through David being a shepherd to some sheep. Remember what he said? The Lord is my shepherd. God, God taught David how to handle obstacles that are much bigger than yourself. Remember Goliath? God taught David what it meant to have a covenant between two people. Remember the friendship and the kinship between David and Jonathan? God taught David what it looks like to have a king that is disobedient to God. King Saul was not the great model that David needed. But what lesson has God taught you? The second phrase I would like to extract is in verse 18. Even when I'm old and gray-headed. Old age does not give David an excuse not to serve God, nor did his gray hair disqualify him. Actually, it did just the opposite. The older he became, the greater urgency he felt to impact the next generation. Unfortunately, we live in a society that values youth. Too often, seniors do not re uh, receive the regard that they are due. Seniors in our society understand David's plea in verse 9. Do not cast me away when I am old. Do not forsake me when my strength is gone. No longer employed. A slower step. A busy family that must be reminded to call. Rising costs. Outpacing income. And more. Seniors have too much to offer, however, to be cast aside. They are a repository of life experiences. Years of practice have taught them valuable lessons. Even in their own struggles, they found that God is faithful and cares for his own. These are things that younger people will discover in time. What is it about God that seniors can best pass along to the next generation? In verse 18, David's prayer is that God will not allow him to be cast aside. And what does he say? Till I declare your power to the next generation, your mighty acts to all who are to come. Why do you think that David wanted the next generation to know about God's power? Because David knew that when you're young, you think of yourself as 10 foot tall and bulletproof. And there's going to come a time in those people's lives when they realize that there are just some situations where they are powerless to do anything. David wanted to teach the next generation that there is a God whose power does not run out, whose power is limitless. 
David wanted to teach the next generation about the power of God. But see, the power of God can take a tragedy and turn it into triumph. God's power can take a broken vessel and turn it into an instrument of salvation. The power of God can heal. The power of God can conquer. The power of God can break down walls. The power of God can lift up a person or bring them to their knees. The power of God can win a battle without a shot being fired. David's desire was for God to keep him around long enough to ensure that the next generation knew God. His passion was for his sons and his daughters. His passion was for his children and his great-grandchildren. His passion was for the young families who lived in his neighborhood. God's power was known to him. and He knew that, the, that these two would benefit greatly from knowing God. There's a poem called The Bridge Builder by Will Allen Dromgool. It says in poetry form what I wish senior adults would take to heart from Psalm 71, verses 17 and 18. Since my youth, God, you have taught me, and to this, de to this day I declare your marvelous deeds. Even when I'm old and gray, do not forsake me, my God, till I declare your power to the next generation, your mighty acts to all who are to come. With that verse in mind, you're the bridge builder. An old man going along highway came at the evening cold and gray to a chasm vast and deep and wide through which was, follow, was flowing a sullen tide. The old man crossed in twilight dim. The sullen stream had no fear for him, but he turned when safe on the other side and built a bridge to span the tide. Old man, said a fellow pilgrim near, you're wasting your strength with building here. Your journey will end with the ending day. You never again will pass this way. You've crossed the chasm deep and wide. Why build this bridge at evening tide? The builder lifted his old gray head. Good friend, in the path I've come, he said, there followed after me today a youth whose feet must pass this way. This chasm that has been as naught to me, to that fair-haired youth, may a pitfall be. He too must cross in the twilight dim. Good friend, I'm building this bridge for him. My fellow senior adults, we need to build bridges. You and I must capture the imagination of younger folk with stories of God's power. Seniors, we have what is lacking in younger people, a long history of God's faithfulness. And to the younger adults and children, we need to build bridges together. Your energy and passion and way of doing things, frankly, frighten us. We want to empower you, but we fear being cast off as unwanted relics. We must pass the torch to you, but we fear the loss of all that we built and the anxiety of a new and different world that is unfolding. Will you appreciate us? Will you respect us? Will you love us? In his song, Here Comes Tomorrow, Ken Miedema writes, Who would have thought it, working together? Once we were strangers, now I'm making friends with you. I'll share my passion, you lend your wisdom. We'll learn to listen and we'll both learn something new. Can we talk across the chasms that have kept us separated? Can we learn to spread our bright new wings and fly the open sky? Can we cast a brave new vision as we face a frightening future? So when the sun comes up tomorrow, you will see this world through friendly eyes, a place where there's room at the table for everyone, because it's the only way to make tomorrow all that it can be. And though vision leads to sacrifice, I know it will be worth the price to see those bridges reach across the rivers and the seas. We'll see those bridges reach from me to you and you to me.
Let's pray. Oh God, we ask that you build bridges among the generations. Help us to see that we've given a great privilege of sharing your faithfulness with those who are younger, sharing our energy and passion with those who are older. God, create bridges in us that enable us to work together to fulfill your kingdom and to reach new heights in ministry and service and in witness for you. We pray this for Christ's sake. Amen. May God bless you.